Welcome everyone to the fourth part in the Open TK video tutorial series. Uh, so in the previous part we had a rotating square and now we are going to move into the third dimension. So uh, we'll first uh, study a, a bit about the projections um, and then uh, we'll move on to creating a cube, 3D cube and then we'll rotate it. Uh, so uh, I'll, uh, just to get started I'll show you that uh, I have removed some of, some of the code from the previous uh, video. I have removed the point where we were setting the projection. Uh, we'll set a new 3D projection here and I have removed all the drawing stuff and all the incrementing we, uh, we were uh, applying to the theta variable here. Uh, I have removed the variable also. So we'll start again from set, uh, setting the projection and then um, we'll do stuff. So um, first let's know about the projections. So there actually are two types of projections, uh, the perspective and the orthographic projection which you might come across. So uh, now I'll show you when to use which type of projection. So uh, the perspective projection has a center uh, of the view, uh, I mean the center of projection where the camera is located. So it seems like you're viewing all of the stuff from this point where the camera is located. Um, and then there is near clip plane and far clip plane. So any objects which uh, do not fall between these clip planes, like some of objects that uh, uh, are before the near clip plane or after the far clip plane that lie after it, will not be displayed. And uh, all of the uh, models between these clip planes will be projected on the near clip plane. Here, uh, these will be projected to the 2D near clip plane uh, and this is the R viewport this is where uh, this is what we see on our screen so um, you can see the rays are diverging uh, from the uh, center of projection the camera so um, the objects which are at a greater, greater distance from the camera will appear smaller as compared to those which are nearer to the camera so like this you can see the yellow ball is closer and the red is uh, at a greater distance so the red ball appears smaller in the when these are projected on the plane so this is the way like we see uh, stuff in our real life so um, and then we'll move on to the orthographic projection so uh, similar to the perspective projection it also has a near and far clip plane um, but the difference is that the rays are not uh, diverging they are parallel to each other so they never meet so there is no center of projection and uh, the distance of the objects from the point where we are viewing uh, is, does not affect the size of the objects which are <coughs> projected here. So you can see the size of both the balls is same although the, the distance from the plane is not the same. Um, and then similarly any of the objects which do not lie inside these planes will not be shown. And so uh, in both of these examples you can see the green ball which lies out of the projection uh, Frustum, projection frustum in the perspective projection case and the um, box uh, projection box uh, in this orthographic projection um, so this green ball will also not be displayed because it does not fall in the projection so uh, since uh, we use the orthographic projection uh, in the previous video uh, to set 2d stuff so uh, using orthographic projection for creating 2D games and other 2D stuff is always more comfortable than project perspective projection. Uh, you will not need a perspective projection when you need to work with 2D. Uh, but uh, when working with 3D games, perspective projection is a more desired one. Um, and orthographic projection is used in 3D uh, when you need to create some uh, engineering designs uh, where you need exact dimensions of the objects or in the computer aided designs uh, and stuff. So here, since we are uh, working, we, our main aim is to accomplish game development. So we'll use perspective projection and we'll not talk about orthographic projection yet. So <clears throat> now to set the perspective projection, you can use uh, GL frustum uh, function, which uh, in which you specify the view frustum. So uh, it takes five, uh, um, six arguments. Uh, the first four being the left, right, bottom and the top coordinates of the near clip plane and then the distance from of the near and the far clip plane from the center of projection. 
So this might seem complicated figuring out the coordinates of these uh, clip planes. So instead, there is another way to do this, uh, which is uh, the OpenTK library contains a type which is called matrix for. So we create a new variable. Uh, it'll be equal to matrix for dot perspective. So using this function, you can create a perspective projection matrix. So the argument this function takes are the angle of field of view, the aspect ratio of the near clip plane and the distance of the near and far clip plane from the center of projection. So this is easier than the first time command. Um, <clears throat> so the field of view angle is the angle between these uh, the bottom and the upper plane. So this is actually the angle in the YZ plane. So you need to specify this angle. Uh, and then the aspect ratio of the near clip plane uh, although the aspect ratio for all the planes that lie between this frustum will be same and so you can just pass here the uh, aspect ratio of your viewport into the into this so uh, first the field of view so you can actually test various field of view values and uh, see which fits, fits best in your application but usually i prefer using 45 uh, so, um, but this perspective function takes only float arguments, so you need to use the f prefix to specify that your values are in the float type. And then the aspect ratio will be the ratio of the viewport, aspect ratio of the viewport, which we have kept window dot width divided by window dot uh, height. So this will be the aspect ratio of our uh, near clip plane. And, and then the distance of the near and the far clip plane. So these values should also be positive, although you are looking to, to the negative side of the z-axis. So the near clip plane will keep at 1.0 and the far clip plane 100.0. So any objects which lie far beyond, uh, beyond the uh, 100 units from the center of projection will not be displayed. So we have created a perspective matrix here, but uh, now we need to <coughs> set this set the pr uh, projection matrix equal to this. So since we are currently in the projection matrix, so any function calls that we use will affect the projection matrix. So you, we can use gl dot uh, load matrix function to load this matrix. Oh, and um, actually um, here the perspective projection function, it only takes float value. So you need to use the f post fix with all of the values or it may give errors. And then you need to pass this matrix into this load matrix function and you need to pass it as a reference. So use the reference keyword and then matrix. And now you can build and run your program to check uh, if there are any errors. So it compiles. So we are, uh, we are going fine at this moment. And now we'll move on to drawing 3D stuff. So uh, we have here render f function. Mm, so what we'll do, we'll draw a 3D cube in this way. So I'll first show you what kind of coordinate system do we have on the screen. So let's suppose this is the x-axis. Um, and this is the y-axis. And the z-axis is coming right at you out of the screen. So let's suppose this axis, uh, the this is the positive side of the z-axis. It is coming right out of the screen towards you and the negative uh, side of z-axis goes into the screen so um, now we what we need to draw uh, we'll draw a cube so it it is always to draw objects uh, at the um, objects which are centered at the origin are always uh, easier to draw um, and also to rotate if you want rotation animation in some objects is easier if they are drawn along the origin although our viewpoint is also on the origin but we'll manage that soon and so we'll draw cube okay let me get this i don't know if this is accurate enough but um, i'll just try to give you a glimpse of what we are going to draw So uh, we'll draw a cube centered at the origin, uh, each side of which is equal to 20 units. So um, we need to specify the coordinates uh, of the in x, y, z form uh, means all the three coordinates for all the three x's we need to specify. So I already have the geometry for such a cube uh, copied here. Uh, 
I have the text for it here. Um, you can look at the front face, uh, the coordinates of the front face, uh, and the back face, the top, the bottom. Um, you can pause the video and copy this geometry from here I'll, because uh, I'm not going to write that again because it takes a lot of time. The right face and the left face. So this is geometry for our cube uh, and I'm using separate color for each face of the cube. So the six faces are here. Um, now we'll start uh, and before we start drawing we need to be familiar with uh, the translate uh, translation I'll just give you a bit of glimpse about translation but we'll talk about it in detail uh, we'll talk about it in detail in another video about uh, matrix transformations so uh, the translate GL translate function is used to change the origin of the uh, coordinate system uh, but the objects which have earlier been drawn at a point will not change the uh, it'll translate change the origin so any of the objects which are drawn after this call to this function will use the new origin as uh, will be drawn according to the new coordinate system but it'll not affect the objects which have already been drawn so what we'll do uh, is because uh, our projection first we'll look at our projection so our center of projection is actually at the center by default and we are looking towards the negative side of the z-axis so this is the our perspective projection so if we draw this cube uh, in the center uh, it'll not be visible because it may lie beyond be behind from where we are viewing the stuff so we need to draw this uh, at some position around here so now what we want to do is we'll uh, translate the origin to this point so the projection we have already set and this will not change so the projection will remain the same and then when, when we translated the, the origin to this point the new coordinate system should look like oh, I'm sorry this will only translate the origin um, some points uh, to the negative side of the z-axis so the x and y values will remain same so this will be a new origin and then when we will draw this cube after translating it will be drawn at this point and so we can view it and since it is along the origin it will also be easier to rotate it so first we'll translate um, some points so translate actually takes three points so the uh, it takes a new coordinate which will be set as the origin so we only need to translate some points on the z-axis so 45.0 uh, f oh it takes the double arguments so we have translated the origin and now we can begin drawing so the faces are in the quadrilateral form here for uh, a collection of four vertices form a quadrilateral so we'll use the begin mode as quads Um, and now I will copy this entire code here and now before we compile and run this program uh, we need to uh, because now we are using 3d projection we need to know that OpenGL does not uh, identify the distance of objects automatically and so it does not know which object is to be drawn over which object so sometimes the object which is behind uh, an object uh, I'll just explain it here so like suppose these uh, we have two objects here this object is in front and then we draw an object which is behind this object but we draw it after we have drawn this object um, so what will happen that uh, the object which we draw afterwards although it is behind it will be drawn over this because OpenGL cannot determine the def depth of object by default so it will be drawn over this although this is behind this object so, uh, so we first need to enable depth testing we'll, which will uh, um, bec uh, the, and when the depth testing is enabled, OpenGL uh, determines uh, the distance of all the objects and that determines which object is to be drawn over which object. So we need to enable it using the enable function and the enable cap will be depth test. So enabling it uh, is not enough alone. 
um, we need to there is a depth buffer just like there is a color buffer bit the frame buffer so we also need to clear the depth buffer or we'll get unexpected results so we'll use the or operator to specify two values to clear it so you can specify multiple values which we want to clear uh, using the or operator clear buffer mask dot depth buffer bit okay so we can now compile a program to check if there are any errors uh, we do not get anything here on the screen yet now uh, we'll figure out what happened here mm, okay so the problem was here we are translating to the positive side although uh, we are looking at the negative side of the z-axis I accidentally forgot the negative sign here um, I'm sorry for this uh, so we are looking at the negative side of the z-axis so um, the positive side is coming right out to us so if you draw it at uh, the positive 45 then it will be drawn behind the camera so it, it will not be seen so we need to keep it negative and now we'll run our program and we see this here so actually we drew a cube but we can only see the front face of the cube yet because uh, the other faces are behind it we cannot see it so we need to apply some rotations so that we can see all the faces some animations so that we can rotate it and see if this, it has other faces so we'll create a let's keep it double easier to use the I don't want to use the F postfix every time so let's call it theta equal to 0, 0.0 uh, we did the same thing in the last uh, tutorial and at the end of the display function we apply some increments to it um, and same thing we did in the last video and now we'll apply some rotations so we want some random rotations so uh, we'll rotate it three times along different vectors and remember uh, uh, you need to rotate after we have translated because we need to rotate it along this point here not along this point so if we f rotate it before translating so the this coordinate system will be rotated and then it will be translated so that will give unexpected results although we'll talk about this uh, rotation and translation and stuff what you need to do first what after uh, in any other video uh, so first just remember it uh, we need to trans uh, rotate after we have translated uh, to the second origin so we'll now apply the rotations um, theta and first we'll rotate it um, first rotation along the x-axis and we'll specify some random vectors here oops okay two vectors will be enough um, so we rotate it to different times along different vectors uh, and now let's check if our cube is rotating so there we go uh, this is a 3d cube which we are rotating so we have successfully uh, achieved a 3d projection and we have drawn a 3d geometry and that is uh, uh, and we have applied some animation and it is working great so this was all for this video uh, stay tuned um, and I'll try to come up with the next part as soon as I can so thanks for watching.